This podcast has been brought to you by Seekers Guidance, the global Islamic seminary. Help us spread the light of prophetic guidance to millions around the world by becoming a monthly supporter. Make a small donation at seekersguidance.org forward slash donate. For as little as $10 a month, you can help people find life-changing guidance. وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما تعلمنا وزدنا من فضلك علما وعملا قربا يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم زدنا ولا تنقصنا وأكرمنا ولا تهنا وأعطنا ولا تحرمنا وأثرنا ولا تذكر علينا وأرضنا وارض عنا وتقبل منا يا أرحم الراحمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أتفير أبال <clears throat> and uh, let's continue with this. So, what's uh, just continuing the, the, the summary? So, the perfect book, the three types of people, and then after that, <clears throat> Allah Subhanahu wa Taala started talking about just because it's perfect, it's perfect, and and He's proving this that you know there's there's nothing in it which would cause doubts. But if you yourself have some sort of doubt, then He is a way of knowing whether it's from God or yourself or not. <clears throat> you're experts in your speech, in your language, in your ability to express meanings. So, if you've got any doubt, then produce a chapter like it, right? You should be able to, you know, you're the experts in your field, right? And if you can't, who can? And if you can't do that, then that's disbelief and its result is going to be the hellfire, right? So, it's your choice, right? Because you know you can't and the Quran explicitly says you'll never be able to, you know, imitate the Quran. Uh, so then uh, he, he says that you know that's the, the choice and then the next ayah we look at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَبَشِّرِ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ أَنَّ لَهُمْ جَنَّاتٍ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِهَا الْأَنْهَارِ كُلَّمَا رُزِقُوا مِنْهَا مِنْ ثَمَرَةِ الرِّزْقَ قَالُوا هَذَا الَّذِي رُزِقْنَا مِنْ قَبْلِ So he says, and give good news to those who believe and do righteous deeds that they have gardens in paradise beneath which rivers, rivers flow. كُلَّمَا رُزِقُوا مِنْهَا مِنْ ثَمَرَةٍ رِزْقًا قَالُوا هَذَا الَّذِي رُزِقْنَا مِنْ قَبْلِ And whenever they're provided with the provision of fruit therefrom, they will say, this is what we were provided with before. وَأُتُوا بِهِ مُتَشَابِهًا وَلَهُمْ And it's given to them in likeness. And they will have therein uh, purified spouses and they will uh, abide therein eternally. Right? And so like I said, this is a translation of Dr. Mustafa Khattab. It's, it's an excellent translation. It's an excellent translation. A translation can only give like about 30% of what's being said. But, you know, because all the implications and stuff. But this is, you know, I'm, I'm quite impressed with this one. So, um, what's happening? What's being said? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And give good news to those who believe and do righteous deeds. So, the discussion here is... Um, it's a follow-on. So here's a, here's a decisive proof. It's from God. If you don't believe, that's what you're going to get. And then he says, and give good news. Right? And th- give good news to those who believe. Believe in what? Believe that the Quran is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? We can understand this from the context. And so this is, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is following his sunnah whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses human beings in the Quran. There's... Uh, there's what you call Targheeb and Tarheeb, right? It was, there's this you know, cartoon image I saw once where there's a man, he's riding on a donkey and he's got a stick with a carrot and he's dangling the carrot, he's, he's dangling the carrot in front of the donkey and the donkey is running trying to get to the carrot, right? That's called Targheeb, you know, giving incentives, making someone want to do things, right? And a lot of people, um, a lot of people, especially in our times, this is the way to help them draw closer to Allah, right? And, you know, and there are other people who the carrot won't work with and they need a stick, right? And so they need, they need, they need firmness. Some people, that's what the prophets are. You know, every one of them is a Bashir, he gives good news, and every one of them is a Nadir, he, you know, he gives warnings, right? So it's, it's both, and the believer benefits from both, right? And that's why you have the, the two wings of hope and fear, right? So... And so this is what happens, you know. Uh, and so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives tarqib. So here, firstly, 
that he sometimes the deterrence comes first to shake people out of their heedlessness and once they once that's gone then they're ready for the good news right so this is what uh, is being said here <clears throat> so he says and give uh, give good news to those who believe and do good works right and uh, it's, it's interesting that you know firstly who's being addressed here um the dominant position is that there are two positions here um one is that it's the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was being addressed oh messenger of allah give good news give this good news to those who believe and what bishara is comes from bashar which is skin because people's skins their faces light up when you give them good news right so give them that make them happy tell them there's a lot of good waiting for you and the other position is uh, allah is speaking to anyone who hears these words you you've heard this go tell the believers you believe in the book of allah go tell them that you know there's a lot of good coming to you go tell them go tell them go tell them right so it's it's showing that this, this good news is so great that you know you know everyone needs to hear about it so therefore the job's being given to everyone you go to anyone who hears this go tell everyone that you see right and then he says uh, give good news to those who believe and do good works so this is the key to entering paradise the belief and the good works is a key to to the ranks and higher levels in, in paradise but it doesn't mean that anyone deserves paradise because of their good deeds the prophet said sallallahu alaihi wasallam none of you will enter paradise with with his deeds and this is not even you ya rasulullah he said not even me unless allah subhanahu wa ta'ala envelops me in his mercy and generosity right hadith in sahih al bukhari and you know there's a hadith of, of the man you know he's worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 500 years someone who had a longer lifetime lifespan than us and and then Allah says after he's judged him okay enter paradise by my mercy and he plants his feet your mercy what about all my deeds you know 500 years I worshipped you so Allah says okay and the angels are told you know weigh his good deeds against just a blessing of eyesight and that 500 years of years of worship is it even enough to it's not even enough to um offset this one blessing right so alhamdulillah right so what gets us in there allah's promise allah's promise of manifesting his generosity upon us so it says وَبَشِّرِ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا and give good news to those who believe and do righteous deeds right and that Allah and so obviously what's being encouraged is is do both right have iman and do good deeds don't just sit on your laurels right I'm a believer everything's sorted I'm going to paradise no there's both right and lahum jannatin that they have jannat and this word is interesting jannat is a plural of jannah jannah is is a garden or an orchard in which there's a lot of vegetation a lot of trees these trees are tall with wide branches that have a lot of leaves and foliage on them right and and there's so many of them and they're so close together and there's so much foliage and leaves and everything that the blood the branches like are interconnected intertwined so if you look from above the ground is covered you can't see it that's what jenna means right uh, so jenna anything with jim noon noon in arabic or kaf noon noon has a meaning of something being hidden and covered you can't see it. the jinn right so uh, the jinn are uh, you can't see it uh something which is maknoon kaf noon noon is 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 is, is hidden right they say a pearl is hidden within the oyster so this is what it means jannatun uh, <clears throat> so so they have met and obviously now think about this being revealed to uh, the arabs someone that's you know that's not li living in a desert when you see greenery it has physical effects on you it changes you physically right you feel happier it lifts depression these sorts of things and for an arab the effect will be stronger right i used to notice this coming back to england uh, on summer trips or ever from, from the middle east like, you know when you see the greenery it's like wow it just hits you and once you're around it for a while it's not as as prominent but it does have its effect its effect right uh janatun and then there's here there's an uh, a usage in arabic which isn't widely understood so therefore it affects translations right so uh, they have gardens not just one but many 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 gardens in which you know there's just nothing but pleasure right uh, beneath which uh, uh, they will have gardens beneath which rivers flow interesting usage so the garden and there's rivers underneath it are the underground no what's implied here is 
beneath which, right? And what's this which referring to? The trees in the garden, right? So gardens beneath its trees, rivers flow. That's what the accurate translation is, right? Because that's understood. It's, it's a rhetorical device in Arabic because it's understood. It's implied. Uh, the Arabs would have understood it you know, based on their language, right? Um, uh, like if I said to you, you know, do you know about the tweet, right? You wouldn't be thinking about me talking about a bird tweet, and you'd think about, you know, social media. So it's like that. So things are understood directly in, in their language. Uh, gardens beneath which rivers flow, beneath whose trees uh, rivers flow. Um, uh, so it says, whenever they are provided with a fruit therefrom, they will say, this is what we were provided with before, right? <clears throat> and so now there's two positions here, right? Um, so, so they're giving fruit and they're saying, oh, this is what we just had. So the one position is, uh, say, Tom Tavi and others went with this, that the one position is that the fruit of paradise resembles each itself. So it's, it's just, it's got a, a look uh, and all the fruit looks similar to it, right? And then when they eat it, they say, oh, we just had something like this. And when they eat it, they find there's many, many wonderful different tastes, right, in this. And each time they have it, there's a different taste and a different uh, fragrance. And it's just, so they think, oh, you know, uh, so every time, so not whenever, every time, whenever they're provided with provision, you know, from, from it, whenever they, they get, Whenever they're given fruit, and the, the point, as I mentioned, that the, um, as I mentioned about fruit, is that fruit is eaten as a dessert. Fruit is eaten for enjoyment and pleasure. So it shows that they're not going to be eating out of hunger. There won't be any hunger, right? And it's just eating for pleasure and enjoyment, right? Comfort food <laughs> without, you know, enjoyment food, right? And. Uh, so they say, you know, they, uh, this is what we were provided with before, right? Uh, so they're in shock that it looks, it looks same, it looks the same as what they just got, but uh, it's not. That's you know, um, that's what the idea is. But then, Allah. So that's one position. Another position is, and this is what Abu Saud and uh, Abu Saud in these two ayat, according to today, is just on top form. He's on top form most of the time. He's just amazing honestly he, the, what he does in this tafsir honestly at this point is just you know it shows why he's Shaykh al-Islam honestly amazing so uh, anhu arda. so <clears throat> so he says um, he takes a much of position which is that <clears throat> when they say this is what we've been given before is it, it, the fruit resembles the fruit of the dunya and you know, we might only be used to seeing a few things. And this is a stronger position. You know, there's more pleasure in seeing many different types of fruit than just seeing one and it's different. So they're seeing, so <clears throat> they see the fruit of the dunya. It looks, uh, Abdullah ibn Abbas said that, you know, the only resemblance they have is the names. So there's, it's like, for example, a strawberry, there'll be strawberries in paradise, but they won't look exactly the same, but it doesn't mean that they're completely different either. Otherwise, the only way you can give something a shared name is if there's, you know, some sort of comparable you know, quality, right? So they will look like the fruits of the dunya, but they'll be better, right? And uh, so he says that um, it's the, they'll, they'll get these fruits and say, oh, they'll say, oh, this is what we were given before in the dunya. And but when they taste it, it's so delicious and so many different flavors and the uh, fragrant aromas and all of these things that is you know they can't contain them. So it's, it's like this is this is what we were given before, but it's not the same. That's 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 why they keep mentioning it because every time they come across it, there's a new delight and a new pleasure and it's just indescribable nothing gets boring in, in in paradise it just keeps there's so much there's an infinite amount of pleasure and pleasure to be derived and the things that give pleasure right and generally you know um allah right uh, so uh, and, and generally you know no one ever gets bored no no one wants any change in paradise so why does it look like the fruit of the dunya because that's what we're used to right and fruit is is nice to look at you know like in the middle east you know in, in summer when people put these uh vines grape vines in their gardens they, they, they don't even eat the grapes right 
unfortunately. <laughs> but it just looks so nice to watch the, see the grapes hanging down. It just looks beautiful. All the other fruits that you have, right? And so it, that, that brings pleasure in and of itself. And so, um, and then, you know, so, Allah. So the, the beautiful taste and all of these things, it's just, you know, amazing. So then, uh, so Allah says, And they're giving it, uh, and it's given to them in likeness. It just looks similar in some aspects to the fruit of the dunya, but it's not, it's not the same, right? It's, 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 the, it's certainly not the same. Uh, and, and they will have therein purified spouses, right? And so, uh, we've discussed this before, everyone will get what pleases them right and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks explicitly about um the rewards that men get because part of this was trying to get encourage them to, to believe right and you know most of the societies you know the men were in power and usually like we see you know we see in the seerah um musa ibn umair you know um he managed to you know convince two people right asad ibn uh, zurara uh he managed to convince a couple of people and because of them the entire tribe accepted islam so it was it was focused to them but will ladies have you know specific pleasures and yes right and you know uh, it's but it does a lot doesn't explicitly mention that so but you can understand this verse to mean too is that they will have purified spouses so if you look at it from the from the perspective of uh, of men one of the one of the perspectives as i mentioned is that there won't be any physical cycles right because those are for procreating and you know uh, children and stuff and so that's not necessary in the akhirah right and so there's but also purification this applies to both genders is that the spouses each everyone will have the believers and believers all the faults and flaws and blemishes will be you know will be removed you know sometimes in the dunya you know like Certain person, I can't deal with that person, <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. Nothing like that. Everyone will be the nicest person you meet. Everyone will have amazing, excellent qualities, right? And, and it's like this, right? And But there is this indication of of the spouses and it's no faults and flaws. And, you know, just, just, you know, pleasure being derived from each other. Because what do most, you know, uh, where, where does the majority of, you know, human pleasure come from? Company, right? And you eat, you drink, and then you company through intimacy. So all of these things are covered. Then he says, Hum fiha khalidun, right? And, um, hum fiha khalidun. And they, and they will abide therein eternally, right? Or, or the technically. Etern it eternity has this meaning of going on forever in both directions, past and future. So, but we we get the meaning that forever, eternally, you can say that. Great. Um, but uh, this 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 understanding that they're gonna the word khulud khalid hum fiha khalidun khalid and khulud and khuld it has a meaning of something being firm and fixed for a long time. It doesn't necessarily mean permanence, right? On its own in the Arabic language, but when the Quran uses it, he also Allah subhanahu wa taala also adds the word abadan, abadiya, abad is permanence, right? So Allah subhanahu wa taala sometimes uses khalidina fiha, and sometimes he uses khalidina uh, fiha abadan, right? So we use that context in all the other contexts where abadan isn't mentioned to understand it is abad, it's there permanently. And why is this such a big thing? Because permanence is what makes a blessing, right? You know. Um, Imagine if you, you know, just look at an example of, you know, someone gets the latest smartphone and it's like got six cameras on the back and it's like brilliant and, you know, whatever, right? And if if it was the only thing that's coming out and it, it was always going to stay in top form and, you know, it wouldn't be damaged or it wouldn't slow down or anything, that's great, right? But you know that, <laughs> you know that, Next year, a new model is going to come out with eight cameras on it. Right? So, you know, um, if if you went and, and you spent, uh, if you went and you spent a lot of money buying this new phone, and then two months later, you know, a newer one comes out, it's like it doesn't have that same, you know, zing to it, right? Because the new one's got more pizzazz. <laughs> so, but or or in a, from another perspective, a pleasure that you have that you're enjoying, if you know it's gonna it's gonna end then 
it's like it, it kind of it lessens the enjoyment knowing that it's, it's not going to last forever it's not going to last as long as i want it to last especially if you're having a good time if there's you know if you if you if you if you're enjoying something you know you're reading a good book or whatever and you know uh in half an hour i've got to go uh, do something it kind of affects your enjoyment within that half hour. you might be engrossed but in the back of your mind it's there allah says it's not going to end live they, they won't even want to move they won't want, want anything to change right so this is what he's saying um right and they will remain in there forever <clears throat> and then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says uh in Allah la yastahiya and yadriba mathalama ba'u mathalama ba'udatan fama fawqaha. So this is one of the ayat and this is basically you have to understand the Quran through tafsir, through understanding the Arabic language. Because if you don't understand the Arabic language and you don't understand the rhetoric, it's not just sarf and nahu. It's like the rhetoric and the styles of the Arabs and expression and all the asalib al bayan, as they say. If you don't have all of these, then in translation, the meaning does not come across and you don't understand the context, right? So the Quran, one of the things the early Muslims, especially like uh, the early Muslims we, we talk about the style and the connections with the Quran. I, I can't go into them, I'm just giving you broad connections. Uh, Imam al Razi says that it's one of the main aspects of the miracle of the Quran, and most of the Mufassirun don't touch on it. That's what Imam al Razi said. But, um, but what, what we're doing here is we're talking about these, you know, uh, how the Quran makes uh, its links with, each, with itself. So, guidance three types of people, and then there's this okay, you've got doubts. So Allah's mentioned in a specific sense, he, here's a general way to clear all your doubts, produce a chapter like if you can't, uh, then you got a choice. If you disbelieve, that's what you get. If you believe, this is what you get. So here we are so far with the surah. And then Allah SWT now goes back to that point and says, okay, let's have a specific, let's have a specific example, right? Then he deals with this and we move forward. Then he says, in Allah la yastahi an yadriba mathalama mathalama ba'udatan fama fawqaha. Indeed, Allah is not timid to present an example that of a mosquito or what is smaller than it. And what was happening is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions um, these similitudes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned uh, for, uh, Ya Yohannas, Duriba Mathalun, Duriba Mathalun, first time you and then you know he'll talk about uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses uh, examples of you know um, a fly, talk about these idols that you have. That if a fly was to take and come and steal something from the idols and fly off with it, they, they don't have the ability to catch it and you know, get what's theirs, right? And then he says, Mathalul Ladina Takhudu. Uh, 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 um, the, the comparable scenario of those that have Allah, those that have uh, uh, taken uh, you know idols as gods, right? It's like uh, it's like a spider building a cobweb. I won't go into it, but you know, instead of the, the, the weakest of houses, right? Is the house of spider the weakest of houses is the cobweb you know it's gone even a baby could could damage one right destroy one so and then so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions it in, in different situations so Abdullah bin Abbas uh, said that the hypocrites heard the previous um, similitudes right the previous comparable scenarios you know with the lightning and the thunder and the darkness and and the fire and the buying and all these things right and they're like you know you know what is a lot you know, we'll see what the is but they were they were criticizing it right they were mocking it that's where the issue is and there are a couple of other narrations saying that it was uh it was the jews of medina who who did this and some said it was, it was also the idolaters they're not mutually exclusive they all could have happened and sometimes you know allah subhanahu wa answers things in a general way to cover all bases right so <clears throat> so what's being said? So he said that uh, in Allah la yastahi, right? Uh, an yadriba mathalan. Allah is so. What is istihya? Here is translated as timid. So haya is being modest, but in this context, it would be to be embarrassed. What is embarrassment? Is like when uh, embarrassment is an an emotion which makes you th you know. You, you retreat inward in a sense 
um, in order to pre you know, because you think you've done something or you might be doing something that people criticize and make fun of. No one likes that feeling. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't have this emotion. He doesn't have emotion like we do, right? And so, uh, rather Allah uses it for its end stage. So if you're embarrassed, it's like, you, you know, like you say, I'll save myself the embarrassment, meaning I won't do this thing, right? So, you know, there are certain things. For example, the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in Allah hayyun kareem, right? Allah is, you know, this word haya, uh, modest, and uh, uh, he, I can't say embarrassed, right? But it, when he says that the, the, the rest of the hadith is that he, you know, he feels embarrassed to, um, that, that when a servant raises his hands, well, the, Allah is embarrassed to send him back without giving him something, something of the good. So embarrassed here means that he doesn't not do this, right? You know, it's, it's, it's a way of saying he doesn't do this, right? So Allah doesn't feel this timidness um, to use, uh, to present an example, yeah? And because they were saying, you know they were making fun of it you know because it's like they're saying oh we're so important we would we would even talk about these animals right what's Allah doing talking about these animals you know their whole attitude is mockery and you know they're making fun of Allah SWT. it's like oh, what is Allah doing here with you know talking about this this fly or the, or, or the, or the, or the, or the spider or the fly or these sorts of things right and it's it's mocking you know that's that's where the problem is right so uh, Allah says he doesn't feel timid to present an example of a ba'uda. A ba'uda is it's a mosquito, right? Or a gnat. It's a really small, insignificant animal, right? In terms of size, in, in terms of, you know, uh, its weight, you know, you know, how much importance do you give to it, right? Fama uh, fawqah, and that which is, as it translated it, or that which is smaller than it, yeah. So in Arabic, it means uh, or the mosquito or that which is beyond it, right? And so there's two interpretations that which is beyond it in size bigger than it in size but the dominant position is that uh, Allah's not uh, embarrassed to use uh, a mosquito uh, you use as a comparable scenario or something with a mosquito in it or that which is beyond it in insignificance right Allah why because if you really stop and think about it each and every one of these things is a tremendous sign of Allah's wisdom power knowledge greatness right and you know it, there, there's there's whole books in our times that, that the ulama have wrote on focusing on the animals in the quran right and exact you know detail looks at, at the camel and camel a camel can eat really you know tough thorns right and it's it's its lips are so tough that they don't get you know pierced by these really sharp thorns right and it can drink enough for a week there's many many things that show it's a sign it's perfectly created for the desert the same with the mosquito the same with the fly the same with the spider all of these things right so you know from their standard you know because they're so high and mighty supposedly they think oh you know why right but in reality what's going on is that in each of them is a tremendous sign from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right and uh, so then he says uh, and those who have believed know that it's a truth from Allah so so what happens now is Allah talks about um, both groups and both responses so he says as for those who believe and as for those who disbelieve so he says فَأَمَّا as for those who believe, they know that it's the absolute truth from their Lord. And the word haq here, the haq in the Quran is not just truth. It's something which is firm, fixed, and it's wise, it's fitting, appropriate. It's the perfect manifestation of absolute wisdom. That's the haq. خَلَقَ اللَّهُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ بِالْحَقِّ Allah created the heavens and the earth with haq, with a wise, fitting, appropriate wisdom. Things are the way they should be in, you know, according to the most wisest possi possibilities. This is how it is. So they know it's Allah using the example, and this is it. So actually, yeah. So so Allah uses it, uses the example, and there's wisdom in it. So He says, "Fayyalamuna uh, anna hul haq." They know, but is their knowledge the point? No, then what's what's uh, intended here is that they recognize it's the truth from their Lord right and because they recognize it's the truth 
Yeah, Allah just mentions knowledge because as soon as they know it's from Allah, they recognize it straight away. So it's like the two are one. That's how it's mentioned. And it's the haq from mirabbihim, from their loving Lord. So A, he's honoring them, saying that he's their Lord, right? Connection to Allah. He's honoring them. And, and B, he's saying that through these similitudes, Allah does their tarbiyah. Allah takes them to their desired state of perfection. They stop, they reflect, they gain guidance, they benefit. Yeah? وَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا And as for those, um, as for those who disbelieve, they've disbelieved in the past, right? And they've stayed that way, right? And uh, they say, what did Allah intend uh, by, by this as an example? Now in the English, this is what I said, you need to understand it in Arabic. In the English, it comes off as a genuine question. It's not a genuine question. It's mockery. They're like, oh, what's Allah doing using these things as an example? Right, and they're making fun. Of, they're making fun of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. That's their that's their crime as well here. Right, so then he says he misleads uh, many thereby, and guy and he guides many thereby. So he repeats thereby, right, because of this method, right, uh, because of the similitude. Is the point of the similitude? What is the point of the similitude? The point of the similitude is of this comparable scenario. The method is. Um, to stop, think, reflect, learn, understand, take on guidance, become closer to Allah, benefit ultimately, eternally in, the, in paradise. That's the, ben that's the reason why Allah mentions these things, right? How many a person understood it properly and said, you know what, yeah, the, these idols, if a fly can take something off them and flies off, they can't get it back. Why am I putting my needs in front of them? They can't do anything for me. I'm as to go to the being that created everything, Allah. Many people benefited from this like this, right? So he says, يُضِلُّ بِهِ كَثِيرًا And he, that he misleads, misguides with this many people. And the fact that he says with this, with the similitude, it shows that it's their actions. Right, it's not a lot taking people off course, it's them uh, going off course themselves because of their bad choices. Now, Abu Sud clearly emphasizes this this is that it's their choices. Allah does not force misguidance on anyone, they choose it. So, Allah says, Fine, go off. So, because of this, He guides them further astray, right? Because they're mocking Allah, they're mocking His revelation, His signs. And you know, He guides. Uh, uh, many 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 by it right the believers they come and they understand this and so he takes them further on course along the straight way and they're going to benefit forever and by this he does not misguide anyone but the fasiqeen so a fisk means to come out of something for something to come out of another thing the meaning here is that they've come out of if you imagine they come out of the sphere of obedience of belief and obedience to God. Belief in God and obedience to God. They've come out of that and they've gone. There's, there are different levels of fist. There's someone who's just, you know, doesn't understand, doesn't have a deep understanding. So he might go, he might commit a sin here and then might drink some wine or something. That's fisk. Then there's someone who's hardcore, that's basic fist. There's someone who's, that, who's delved into it and he's just got a habit of sins. That's also fisk, right? For these people, you know, it's over. We ask Allah, you know, uh, to protect us from being like this, right? And then there's the, the ultimate level of fisk, which is where someone rejects Allah, his messenger, his belief, signs, everything. And someone like this, someone like this is, is, you know, openly and deliberately disobeying Allah and choosing to uh, ignore his message and his signs and his proofs and everything. So this further shows that the only people who are actually misguided are these people, the Fasiqeen, which also shows that it's their crimes that cause them to be misguided, right? Otherwise, Allah wants guidance. Why is He sending the, the revelation, right? So we'll stop here. But beyond this, there's a further description of uh, uh, of these people and what they're like. And what we'll do is we will look at that. Next, inshallah ta'ala. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Thank you for listening. This podcast was brought to you by Seekers Guidance, the global Islamic seminary. Visit seekersguidance.org to access reliable Islamic knowledge taught by qualified teachers. We offer a wide range of courses, podcasts, articles, and a world-class answer service. 
Support us in spreading free, reliable Islamic knowledge to millions around the world by becoming a monthly supporter. Visit seekersguidance.org forward slash donate and make a small monthly commitment today. Our beloved Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Whoever guides someone to goodness will have a similar reward. So don't forget to share this podcast and spread prophetic guidance.